The center of our solar system is more than just a heat source. The sun is a powerful energy producer. Its rays penetrate the Earth with a constant 173,000 terawatts of solar power, more than 10,000 times what the whole Earth consumes annually. Naturally, humankind has been working to harness the sun's power. In 1839, French physicist Edmond Becquerel developed the first solar cell, known as a photovoltaic cell. The next major milestone was a solar battery created by Bell Telephone Laboratories in 1954. The company's solar cell update would lay the groundwork for today's solar panels. Vastly improved, modern solar panel technology is used by both utility companies and everyday citizens. So what's the next major innovation for solar technology? It's printable solar cells. At the University of Minnesota Morris, Professor Ted Pappenfuss is working in partnership with fellow scientists at St. Catherine University to develop sustainable materials for solar cell production. Uh, the main issue with the field is the fact that we're not using sustainable materials to advance those products in the field. Today's materials are coming from fossil fuels like petroleum, so what we need to do is think about replacing fossil fuels with more, more sustainable approaches. And one of the best sustainable approaches is to use um, biomass or plant-based materials that are readily abundant and sustainable. Agricultural biomass offers great potential, with as much as 144 million tons produced each year in the United States. We produce a lot of corn in the area, so one potential byproduct is simply use corn cobs. So um, throughout the Midwest, we produce a lot of, of, of plant material. The approach that we're taking is don't use the edible part of the plant, but rather the, the byproduct. So there's no sort of uh, food competition that we're, we're trying to uh, get into. We're simply focusing on the uh, inedible part of the plant. In the lab, Papenfus and other researchers are able to break down molecules within the plant's byproducts into furfural. This organic compound is then used to create the plastics needed for printable solar cell production. What is interesting about this technology is we would use those plastics as inks in traditional printing processes. What's unique about these particular inks is they conduct electricity, which is a requirement for a material in a solar cell. While the U of M Morris and St. Catherine campuses have been working on creating plastics for the cells, their collaborators more than 8,000 miles away at the University of Newcastle, Australia, have been using those plastics to engineer and print functioning solar cells for the last couple of years. As we speak right now, these solar cells are producing electricity on tops of buildings uh, throughout Australia. So the shiny part of the solar cell that you're seeing is actually aluminum, so what you do in the one of the final steps in the printing process is evaporate very thin film of aluminum and that forms the final electrode that's needed for the elect electrical contacts in the solar device. If you've ever seen the inner coating of a potato chip bag, what you're looking at, it, looking at there is a thin film of aluminum as well. So the intended use for the printable solar cell would eventually get them uh, distributed across the planet. Because of their lightweight um, and low cost, they could be um, in installed in areas that normally wouldn't be able to install. So for example, on roofs, you wouldn't have to worry about the, the weight of the solar cell, or they could go inside of buildings and so forth. Another potential application for these would be in state parks. So if you needed to charge your cell phone, for example, and you were in a state park, uh, you could be in the middle of a forest and potentially could be utilizing this technology. There's parts of the planet where people do not have access to any form of energy. And as we know, there's a very strong correlation to available energy and economic prosperity. So there's many disadvantaged populations across the planet where we could implement this technology in, a, in an efficient manner so that those populations can thrive as well.